Hi, I'm Jay Feinberg, founder and executive director of the Gift of Life Bow Marrow Foundation. And I am Bill Beagle, privileged to serve as Gift of Life's chairman of the board. Jay and I are excited to welcome you to our first ever global benefit event, our virtual gala, coming to you straight from Gift of Life's headquarters in Boca Raton, Florida. This evening, we'll share inspirational stories of incredible donors and recipients, get an exclusive behind the scenes view of how and where the dedicated Gift of Life staff conducts their life-saving work, and pay tribute to the very special woman who started it all, Jay's mom, Arlene Feinberg. I'd like to start by thanking you, our loyal friends and supporters who make Gift of Life's good work possible. While we usually begin our gala events by asking you to silence your gadgets, this evening we invite you to share your thoughts and feelings by chatting live with other attendees throughout the program. So grab a snack, get comfortable, and enjoy. In Gift of Life's recruitment division, we work with hundreds of volunteer coordinators throughout the country to plan donor drives, prepare and ship out supplies, and process the cheek swab kits before sending them off to the lab for testing. In 2013 alone, Gift of Life organized over 1,000 drives and tested over 25,000 potential donors. Once a potential donor's tissue type is determined at the lab, the information is added to this database. Gift of Life is one of 73 registries in 52 countries, and the heart of the registry is MatchQuest, the donor recipient management system housed here in the organization's data center. Transplant hospitals around the world search MatchQuest daily, hoping to find a donor to help save the life of any patient in need. Last year, Gift of Life conducted searches for over 6,000 patients in more than 30 countries. Since the beginning, over 11,000 matches have been found. This is Amy at the Gift of Life Bone Marrow Foundation. How are you? I wanted to let you know that you have now been identified as a potential match for a patient. Most donors describe that initial phone call alerting them that they're a match as one of the most thrilling experiences of their lives a winning the lottery of sorts. Those calls are made from Gift of Life's Donor Services Department. Our coordinators work with the donors through the entire process, from that initial phone call all the way through the donation and beyond, even keeping in contact to give updates on the recipient's condition whenever possible. Though the donation process is anonymous, donors and recipients may decide to meet after a set amount of time has passed since the transplant. The time frame is usually one year, but that depends on transplant center guidelines. I still remember the day I met my bone marrow donor, Becky, at the airport in Chicago. It was an experience I will cherish always. Becky is too humble to acknowledge it, but she saved more than one life on the day she donated her marrow to me. The Talmud teaches us that to save one life is like saving the entire world, and that's exactly what she did. Recently, Tamar, a donor from New York, met Philip the man whose life she saved. This incredible and emotional meeting took place in Chicago on the set of The Whitney Reynolds Show, which will air nationally on PBS this fall. Tonight, we'll get a special preview of this magical moment. Please watch. I'm here because somebody gave a selfless act. And uh, when I see like my grandchildren, or I blow bubbles, or I walk on a sunny day. It's because someone gave me a gift of life. Hi, my name is uh, Philip Ozer. I'm uh, uh, 66 years old. I, I uh, came down with uh, uh, leukemia about three years ago, four years ago. And uh, through the gift of life, I had uh, um, a transplant which put me back on the road to recovery. My name's Tamar. I registered to, with the Gift of Life um, when I was 18 years old and when I was 19 I was matched to help save somebody's life with a stem cell donation. Registering is really simple and 
painless in every which way. I just took some kind of swabs and just swabbed my cheek cells and then I put them in a little container and then I gave them to the people who were running the registry and people could do that by mail just by receiving the package from Gift of Life. When they said there was a match I thought oh my god uh, uh, will I really be able you know there is somebody out there that matched me and was willing to step forward. This didn't really seem like a I could lose anything here like the only thing I would miss was like classes which freshman in college I didn't really care. Um, the only person who could lose would be the recipient because he wouldn't get anything but this was a few days of my time and it didn't hurt me in any which way whatsoever. You, you just looked at the little bag and you said could that save my life? I mean could that prolong my life for a year, two years? In the email he sent me, he had said he had been told that he only had six months to live and now he had survived another two years. He had seen his grandchildren be born. He saw his kids graduate from high school and go to college and start families. And like, I didn't really realize until right then how what I actually did, it didn't really hit me until that day. Let's welcome out Tamar, your donor. Oh, okay. can I give you another <laughs> book? Oh, oh it's so happy to meet you. Oh, oh. I've got to thank you so much. You know, so I, I, I'm, uh, I'm here because he, thank you so much. Can, can you sit down? Oh, I, excuse me, I'm without words. But I donated to somebody living on the other side of the country. I never even knew he existed before and now he's survived another four years of life. But if I hadn't been registered, they would never have found me. So there could be all these other matches out there that people are looking for and nobody knows just because people haven't registered. If you could prolong somebody's life for another day, for another week, or, or wouldn't you want to do it? I never get tired of sharing the experience of these incredible and powerful meetings. They're the true symbol of the health and hope Gift of Life brings to patients and their families. This is the best way to demonstrate the importance of our life-saving work. For many, a transplant is not simply a cure, it's truly a second chance at life. And when the transplant recipients are children, the impact is even more lasting and profound. Nearly 10 years ago, 11-year-old Mark met his donor, Samuel, at a special event hosted by the New York Mets. Mark is now 21 years old and will be starting his studies at Southern Connecticut University this fall. We caught up with the pair recently and reflected on their life-changing experiences, their enduring friendship, and all the wonderful things Mark has accomplished thanks to his donor. As you watch, remember to keep the conversation going by chatting with others who are with us online. You can also show your support by making your contribution online or by calling our office at 1-800-9-MARROW. Volunteers are standing by now to take your calls. Well, our next guests are also bone marrow donor recipient 10 years in. So this is not your first time to meet. No. no. Okay, so we have Mark and Samuel. Welcome to the show. Uh, Thanks thank for having you. us. Thank you very much for all of this. Yeah, so what is it like? I'll throw this one to you, Samuel. Okay. What is it like 10 years later seeing Mark, who you saved? Uh, we have seen each other um, for the past decade at the Gift of Life Gala dinners. So I I've seen Mark grow up. I've seen Mark remain healthy. And it's really an amazing experience just as a continued affirmation of life. Do you feel connected to him almost like a sibling? Whenever we see each other um, or those random Facebook messages, it's just something to reconnect and get back together and find out how each of us are doing. So Mark, you're 21 now. Yeah. What was it like for you when you got diagnosed and needed this bone marrow transplant? Well, when I was a kid, I was only nine at the time. So when you got called upon, you know, that you're, you're cancer and you have it. It really didn't really hit me as much. It kind of just was, okay, I'm going to the hospital. 
and I kind of got to go through all the treatments. I really didn't have a lot of questions that I would have now rather than when I was a kid. It kind of was just a hole thrown at me and just go with it. So what is life like now? What have you been able to do thanks to Samuel? The easier question of what haven't I been able to do. And I've, I really have no stops and I can do whatever I want when I want thanks to Sam. What would you say to people at home that are thinking about maybe joining the, the registry, bone marrow donation? I mean, it saved your life. Just do it. it. Just get up and do it. It takes 10 minutes and could save another nine-year-old kid's life. Let's go back to when you met at the Mets game. What was that like? It, it was certainly an experience. I think Shea Stadium, I think it was really the best opportunity uh, for our situation. Look at him, 21 years old, living life, yep. and thankful to be alive yeah. because of Samuel yep. here. Well, thank you both so much for coming on. We um, love, thank you. love so, stories yeah. like these. Yep. So Thanks thank you both. Thank you so much, Mark and Samuel, for sharing your stories with us. From the kindness of our donors to the courage of the recipients, to the generosity of our supporters and the enthusiasm of our volunteers, each one of you is an inspiration and, as we've seen, your actions have a real positive impact on society. Gift of Life started as a true mom and pop operation, a grassroots effort to save one life, Jay's. I'm proud to have been involved with Gift of Life since the very beginning. No matter how big the organization grows and how much it achieves, it still feels like a family. Sadly, we lost our matriarch, Arlene Feinberg, in January of this year. My mom was, in the truest sense, the quintessential Jewish mother. When I was diagnosed with leukemia and told my chances of finding a match were slim because there were so few Jewish donors in the registry, she refused to stand idly by and let me die. She fought for years to find my match, and along the way, shared her knowledge, expertise, and compassion with countless other patients and their families in similar circumstances. Her efforts not only saved my life, but the lives of thousands more, and her legacy will continue with matches that will be made well into the future. Here are just a few stories and memories of my mother shared by some of her many, many friends. The gift of life helps people, this, that's what Arlene did. The gift of life gives hope to people, that's what Arlene did, she gave hope to people. She, the gift of life gives life to people, and that was what Arlene did. Right away I, I got the impression, here's a woman that really cares, very loving, very giving, always cared about you as a person was always interested in what was happening in your life and was there through happy times and sad times for any friend, any of her friends or family. It was, it was a privilege to know her. Well, I certainly remember Arlene be, being everyone's Jewish mother. Um, she took care of everyone that came in contact with her. She invited us into her heart and into her home. She was always preparing food for everyone and making sure that everyone was content and happy, as happy as you can be when you're doing such important work. The family was told pretty much that Jay should just get his affairs in order, enjoy his life, and call it a day. And Arlene would not take that as a solution. She just made the decision that she was going to do whatever it took to find a donor for Jay. And if that included testing half of the known world, she was going to do that, and she did. So I went over to the Feinberg's house in West Orange, New Jersey, and they were operating off of their dining room table, running drives, getting as much publicity out as possible. I would describe Arlene as passionate, dedicated and very genuine in her approach. So we knew she all had a mission to do, but that didn't stop her from getting to know people along the way and having a genuine interest in everyone. 
Arlene had more energy than any 10 people I knew. She was a lady at all times. She was gracious, she was gentle, she was unflappable, but she was determined. And she never took no for an answer. I think one of her greatest qualities was her ability to relate to people. And everyone that came in contact with her became her friend. I don't know that anybody could have said no to Arlene. How could you say no to a woman who was endearing? She got right into your heart. She was persistent. She knew what needed to be done. She explained everything absolutely clearly. And most important, she always smiled and she kind of held your hand and she kind of just connected with you. When you connect with somebody and they have a request like that especially, you just do it. It didn't matter how many drives, it didn't matter how hard she had to work. It didn't matter how many phone calls or how many contacts. She was determined that she would make this a possibility and save his life. When Arlene called me about setting up the initial drive at the college, she was driven. She was partnering with God, and they were not going to stop until they found a match. What drove Arlene, I think, was that this whole bone marrow issue became a calling for her. When she quickly understood how difficult it was, not only for Jay to find a donor, but for so many other people, it actually, I think, became her calling in life. When other donors were found for people who were looking for matches, uh, I think that Arlene became even more tenacious, even more ready, really ready, to continue the search and say to herself, we will find someone. I think because Arlene learned so much and knew so much truly about the whole picture of uh, what happens when you need a, a bone marrow transplantation, she became like the world's leading authority. I mean, I know nurses and doctors who couldn't explain things as well as she did. She didn't say, you have to save my son. She always talked about saving people in need who were so sick. And I think that impacted people tremendously. Her strength, her advocacy was unparalleled. Um, lots of people have causes, but she had a passion to see this through. It started with Jay didn't end with Jay. It didn't stop and say, okay, we did our thing. Now let's move on with our lives. It just continued because she understood what was necessary and what was needed so desperately that she just took it on and never stopped. As a bone marrow transplant physician myself, I can say that one of the legacies that Arlene leaves is diversifying the pool of donors that are available for our patients. We know that bone marrow type is often inherited along ethnic lines, and that means that people who are in minority groups, people who are underrepresented on other registries, now have a chance for the first time of finding a donor, something that was really not possible just a few years before. I think that patients in desperate situations are searching for some help, some encouragement, some support. What better person than Arlene throughout the years who went through that herself, who understood to her very core what it was like in that desperate situation to go on and encourage other patients, other families who now find themselves in the same situation. Arlene's advice to the family was always be positive. It'll work, it'll happen. Be positive. Our drive for my brother was I think the largest drive, not only for gift of life, but in the bone marrow world it was for 17,000 people. For our family, it meant a lot to have someone like Arlene on our side and our corner um, because we needed the strength. I had just learned that one of my dearest friends was diagnosed with um, AML and that the only real option for him was a bone marrow drive. Feeling the weight of the world on my shoulders, how, how am I going to save his life, ultimately ended up reaching gift of life and the person who answered the phone was Arlene. 
Getting that kind of support and unbiased information, it was like going from the darkness into the light. What I will miss most about Arlene is her smile, her friendliness, her vision to take gift of life to the next level. One who saves one life is like he saved an entire world. Can you imagine how many worlds Arlene Feinberg has saved? Tikkun Olam and Pikuach Nefesh were inherent in every step she took and in everything she did. The belief that we have to be responsible for others in this world and to see that others outside of our immediate family are well cared for and that we bring resolution to problems that may impact their lives, I think that was critical to her. This was her life. When you would see her at a dinner, she was beaming as she would look on stage when they would take a photo of all the recipients and their matches that were able to meet and they would be like, it looked to me like there were hundreds of people on the stage and you watched her face and Jack's face and it just said how proud we are of Gift of Life. So I do think it is her legacy. There were some human beings had a rise above and she sure did. She was just wonderful, energetic, cheerful, hopeful. It was so easy to be with her, so easy to talk to her. I loved her so much. I'm gonna miss her. I do miss her. And Arlene taught me the most valuable lesson of a mom, and that's to never, ever give up on your child, no matter what the circumstances. That's what moms do. They never, ever, ever give up on you. I'm very grateful to, uh, to know the Feinberg family and to have known uh, Arlene, a beautiful, beautiful spirit that lived here on Earth with us. I can picture Arlene's face, her smile, her eyes lighting up. I miss her so much, and I know everyone does. The gift of life is a continuation of, of who she is, and may the gift of life just continue in its amazing, wonderful things that it does every day to help people in this world. My mother has been described by so many who knew her as a woman of valor. She was the ultimate caregiver, always helping people in need. It was her dream to ensure that no patient die needlessly for lack of a donor. Although we have come a long way, there is still so much more to accomplish. Only half of the 10,000 people diagnosed each year benefit from the transplant they need, and that's because they lack their miracle match. And so I'm honored to announce the launch of an ambitious $4 million campaign to add 70,000 new donors to the registry. We have called this campaign Arlene's Vision and hope the many thousands of lives it will save will perpetuate her memory for decades to come. Gift of Life's mission is simple, a match, anytime, anywhere, for anyone. But we can't achieve this dream without you aligning with our mission, believing in our work, and sharing your financial support. Funds are needed to continue to build our registry. Please make your tax-deductible contribution to Arlene's vision right now online or by calling 1-800-9-MARROW. We are lucky that our very generous supporters, Warren and Mitzi Eisenberg, have offered to match all contributions made this evening up to $100,000. Let's not let this matching gift opportunity go to waste. Please make your pledge now. Let's conclude our inaugural virtual gala with a few words from Arlene Feinberg herself, taken from our very first gala in 2001. Our greatest wish has always been to facilitate life-saving transplants for as many patients as possible. And our efforts, our efforts come straight from our hearts. As long as there is a need, we will remain totally committed to our mission. Thank you all so very much.